Okay, let's go. Ready when you are. Okay. Um, hi, welcome to this um, little mini interview. Well, might be a lengthy interview with the amazing Matty, what I call Matty Eagles, Matty Eagles, Matthew Eagles, uh, legendary person in the um, in the world of Parkinson's disease. Uh, so Matty and I met um, through a mutual friend um, 25 or more years ago. Um, and we've lost touch a little bit um, between those years, but Matty's always been in my mind. Whenever Parkinson's has been brought up, he's always been in my mind. And um, because April is uh, Parkinson's Awareness Month, um, I'm absolutely thrilled that Matty's able to uh, spend time today to talk a little bit about um, him and his challenges and his loves of the... Of the um, <laughs> <laughs> of Parkinson's. Right. We need to go back to basics. What actually is Parkinson's um disease? I don't like calling it disease, but what is Parkinson's Matty? No. Well first of all, thank you ever so much. It's a real pleasure to be able to uh to sort of speak to you today. As you can see, I'm a bit twitchy, but it will calm down, so panic not. And if I completely disappear off my chair. And I will get back on and carry on. Uh, no, Parkinson's is a chronic degenerative neurological disease where the brain cells that produce dopamine die off. And it's normally seen as like somebody, just, an old person, an old white man shaking, which is, which is, True to a certain extent, but ex excludes a lot of people with Parkinson's. Really, the average onset age is about between 60 and 70. But people can live with the signs, early signs, for many years without seeking medical advice. And to be fair, without knowing anything untoward is happening. We're talking REM sleep disturbances, we're talking excessive tiredness, we're talking apathy, we're talking depression, we're talking balance issues, problems emptying your bowels or an urgency to pee, micrographia, small handwriting, hand tremors. These are just a selection of symptoms that you can be suffering from or or living without even knowing you've got Parkinson's. But I think it's important to to say that Parkinson's is a full body experience. And I didn't even know this. It affects every single muscle in your body. Wow. Um, so it can affect it affects your temperature regulation, it affects your diaphragm, it affects everything you can possibly imagine because it's if you don't, if your body doesn't make enough dopamine, then messages don't get to your body properly. It's essentially, it's essentially like the messages come. I I describe it super simply, and I, it's probably not not a scientist's way of doing it. This is how I personally understand it, and how I explain it. The messages go from muscles to muscles, as, and in between there's a synapse which takes lots of different messages across to the other side when your body does not make dopamine the messages stop at one side so they don't get the ship doesn't come if you like dopamine ship doesn't come and take them across to the other side it's a bit like it's a bit like the um the ferries from david to calais sort of stopping at one port and not going over to the other side it get, things stop and things get congested so essentially it's cells dying in your brain and they don't get replaced so the more the old the more the disease which I, I mean i hate calling it a disease it's more like a syndrome really because yeah not there's so many symptoms and it's like it's like going into W. H. Smith's and picking a pick and mix. You can have a you can have you might have sort of sleep disturbances, and then you might have something else. But 
Not everybody suffers every single symptom, but there are about 40 in total. Wow. And so that... so what age were you when you were diagnosed? Um, and how did the diagnosis affect your happiness levels? <laughs> well, this is, this is a super interesting one because my symptoms came on ridiculously early. Um, the earliest recognition I've got of being diagnosed with Parkinson's is actually in my digital health records and it says on my seventh birthday on the 7th of November 1975 it's got down Parkinson's so somebody knew I suspect it was my GP that I'd got Parkinson's and that's in my medical records um, so that that's what I go now with as my official diagnosis but before that it was very upsetting as a young child because I, I, I was suffering like um frozen shoulder, so I was getting pain in my neck. I I couldn't balance properly. I was walking on my tiptoes, and I think personally the most distressing thing was I loved to play sport as a young boy, and at the time I was playing junior rugby and my. Uncle and my my dad used to come and watch me. I used to play mini rugby for Macclesfield, mm. and then I just I just couldn't keep up with the other other players, and they didn't know what. And I, because I had been able to up until I guess six ish, I guess I'm wanting to say six, but I mean I've no idea when the actual Parkinson started. I actually suspect because it's subsequently been proved that I have a genetic version of Parkinson's, but it's a recessive gene which needs a trigger to sort of activate the actual genetic material. But as a toddler, I drank brake fluid and had to have my stomach pumped. I licked an emulsion paintbrush clean of paint. And had to have my stomach pumped. Oh. I ate a box of matches and had to have my stomach pumped. So I actually suspect one or the combination of these poisons that I put in my body might well have activated the genetic material, which is the Parkin gene. Mm. So I've had it for a long, long time. So did it affect your happiness levels, like, you know, because you could play sport? I, yeah, I think very much so. Yeah. I mean, I tried to play sport. Um, I mean, I, I always loved playing football with the lads, although I was always, always, always last to be picked. But I loved it. I'd always been a, a big football fan, and I used to love playing goal. <laughs> Unfortunately... I quite often ended up diving for the ball after it had gone in the net, which didn't make me very popular with my teammates, <laughs> even though I, w I was convinced I was diving at the right time. So I think I was regarded as a bit of a bit of a joke footballer at school. But I, I mean, I still loved it. But yeah, it, yeah, it, it upset me because I really wanted to play well. And I think... I, when you actually when I actually read the question when you sent it to me, I, it actually brought a real sort of vivid image of me cuddling a, a toy penguin that I used to have called Percy Penguin, and I must have been about eight. And I used to, my mum and dad insisted on me wearing sandals as a young kid. In Were the they the sandals, Matty? Oh God, yeah, I hated <laughs> them. <laughs> I absolutely hated them. More so because I was, because I used to walk on my tiptoes. I always used to bash my big toe. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So I used to really hate wearing them. <laughs> but I, mean, I had I had a real sort of vivid image of me like cuddling this penguin like this and sort of crying, crying into the penguin. Oh. But, of course, a lot of it was a fact. Not only that I couldn't participate in what I wanted to do, it was not knowing why, I think, mm -hmm. and how long it would last for. 
because at the end of the day, I haven't got a clue. If you if somebody said to me, we've got Parkinson's, they didn't have the internet back then. It wasn't easy to sort of just go and find out what it was. Yeah. And when you did, it was associated with old people. So I I had no sort of way of assimilating the information, if you like, of what Parkinson's was to what I was going through. And it's incredibly so, rare as a youngster to be diagnosed, isn't it, Matty? I mean... It, it is, it is. And in fact... Much to, I mean, I found out over the years going to conferences, uh, consultants are very loath to actually diagnose young people with Parkinson's, right. young onset Parkinson's, particularly, particularly in the US, uh, because of the insurance implications, because it would mean them forking out for drugs for years and years and years and years and years. And years. And in fact, I mean, it's astonishing, really, the fact that your your health journey can, can can be actually hindered by the fact that insurance companies don't want to pay for your drugs for that amount of time. And unfortunately, that's, that goes back to some of the healthcare professionals in the US. And I remember I was at um, a Europe AI conference in London. And I was speaking to a the, the guy who ran a, a children's hospital in Orange County in California. And I asked him if he'd encountered anybody with symptoms similar to mine. And he said, we don't diagnose young people with Parkinson's. And he laughed at me and trivialized it. And he was talking, I mean, we've been talking in the group with some students, student, student uh, medics and Cardiff University and they were lapping at what he was saying and going, honestly, this is so wrong. Should be open it, to diagnosing at any age, any condition, I would have thought. Absolutely. This, this is why some people important. get I mean, not knowing is or is is a terrible situation to be going through. But not that but somebody else knowing that you do have are uh, diaspharing from something and then not diagnosing it because they can't be bothered with the financial side of it. It's just beyond beyond belief, in my view. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I had... I was so involved in lots of different events as a young child that I, I didn't really have time to sort of get... Feel feel sort of sad, sorry for myself, but I did go through various stages in my teenage years and twenty somethings when I was very quite really low. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's and that's like it's natural anyway, but it must have been incredible because you got a double helping of all the emotions going on as well as the um, well, yeah, exactly, hormones. exactly. So it, yeah, it it was pretty horrible, really. I mean. I'm 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 a totally different person now. now I'm in my mid fifties, obviously, and as you can see by the smile I've got on my face. But um, no, I mean I got I some of the, even some of the teachers were pretty nasty to me at school. Some of them were be really lovely, and I'm still in contact with them. But some of them who are now no longer with us. I mean, I used to get called dead legs by my Latin teacher. And I used to get called sparrow legs by a history teacher. So that doesn't really boost your confidence at all and your self-esteem, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, at and, all. and that and that would happen to anybody, you know, um, as well, if you were called, you know, names. It's it, it's for, it's funny, I mean yeah. the var various people have, have actually come back to me, obviously since I I'm now working, so I'm really sorry for bullying you, but do you know what? I remember the good times, and I much, much rather prefer to remember the good times I had at school, which were, which were many. Yeah, well, that's, that's um, it. look at the positives. <laughs> oh God, yes, what, what yeah. Well, so what does yeah. your what does your life look like now? You know, is it, um, you know, do you live in a house or yeah, life, life, life family? Work? Yeah, what, what do you do? Life, life, life is so good. It's probably the best it's ever been. Um. I've now lived in Cuddington in Cheshire for 
10 years now. Um, I live, we just live in a little end terrace, but we have like a back, a back patio now beside big side garden, have a dog and that I've been married and it's actually my ninth wedding anniversary tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you very much on <laughs> Wednesday, the 19th of April. I just thought I'd add that in, just in case anyone wanted to send any card. I'm only kidding. But um, no, I have a, I have a, a 20-year-old stepson as well. Who actually, he's not my stepson. He's my son. I brought him up as my own since he was six. He calls me dad. And he has done for years and years and years. And I love that. It's great. Oh, that's lovely. He's a Manchester United fan, but he can't, I can't help that. I've tried getting him to be a West Ham fan. It simply doesn't work. But now he just being with the fan with the fan brings me great joy. Um, say for example, my son is a is a a, a truck driver and uh-huh. he's only twenty he's the youngest person at his company to to get his class one license, which he got when he was nineteen. So he drives forty four ton lorries for a living. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> At the age of 20, and he loves it. Yeah. And does your dog help you with any tasks? Is it that... <laughs> not really um, yeah. you? <laughs> the dog, I don't know whether the, the dog's probably more sort of, I can see her hobbling across the, she's 12, bless her. She, from, from a mental well-being being point of view, she's the most, I mean, I've lived with dogs all my life. We've always had dogs, whichever house I've ever been with. But she has to be the most adorable one. She, I mean, I make up songs and insert her name into the songs and sing songs to her. And she, I used to play fight with her in all sorts. But she's twelve now and she's got bad hips and she wobbles along. But she's, she, I tell you, dogs are such great, great company. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you've heard this, but they don't judge you. That whatever you've done, as long as you're not sort of permanently smacking them or telling them off, or but I mean they, they they'll come back with unconditional love. They'll still wag the tail if you produce a biscuit or if you speak to them nicely. If you hello Ruby and she will wag a little tail, and just a dog wagging its tail it brings wellness in my mind. Mm. Yeah, I mean they're very therapeutic. I saw a video <laughs> only last night of one being. A little puppy in a retirement home in Timperley, just yeah. taken in and and the therapy that it gives to um, it's, you know, the elderly and youngsters and everything is incredible. it's simply it's beautiful, awesome. Sarah. It really is. Just been able to stroke and feel. I'm just getting getting feedback. I know they're an animal, but they're just as yeah, the, their emotions are just tied up in you. That all you're their boss, if you like. You're part of their pack. You're in their gang. And they love you unconditionally because of that. And I, I think that's so wonderful. So do you work when, you know, for a living? Or yes, yes, I do. I, yeah. Yeah. I work four days a week for a healthcare communications company where I advocate for patients. I provide insight. I provide sort of... Really, it's... um. I provided the realistic situation that patients faced are faced with when we're looking at uh, promoting and promoting brands used by pharmaceuticals. So I sort of dig deep and find out what the the big issues that patients are facing. And I um, really am the conduit really between healthcare professionals, pharma companies, and the and people who who were doing comms because because I'm so I don't know gregarious and outgoing I'm able to get on with all people from all sorts of different sort of backgrounds and obviously being a patient for so many years as well we have it's like being in a club it's really weird if you, <laughs> if anybody has any issues to do with their health and you mention you've got Parkinson's or or you got some, you've got something on. You're instantly in the patient club. It's so funny. But people, people would, 
I mean, everybody's got their issues in life. It doesn't matter what they are, but when you find somebody that's got similar kind of things going on to yourself, there's kind of like a, a mutual empathy there. Yeah. I think it's really... Camaraderie, good. isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, so that's good. exactly yeah. it. Yeah. That's exactly it. That's really So good. I work four days a week for, well... For a company called Havas Health and New well, Havas Links Group in Man who are based in Manchester and London and New York. And I also work for their American sister company called Havas Health and You. And I work in a virtual team there who kind of do kind of sprints, if you like, to solve particular problems for clients. And that's all virtual. Well, I'm virtual. We're sort of based in New York, Los Angeles, Madrid, Vancouver. No, Toronto, I think it. Toronto, I beg your pardon. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. It keeps me busy, keeps me focused. And it keeps me meeting some amazing people as well. Mm -hmm. That's really good. So um, do you have, like, constant challenges because of your condition? <laughs> yes. Working yeah. or in your home yeah, life? Every, what are your ab challenges you have to overcome and cope with all the time? It's funny, Sarah, every single thing that you just sub people subconsciously just do, mm. I have to think about. Even sitting on this chair is a challenge for me because I'm wriggling about. Every, simply everything, every room has its own challenges. It's like um, the bathroom getting in and out of the shower. I have like handles everywhere to sort of help me. I cut myself. I don't do it deliberately, but I regularly cut myself shaving. And why I choose to have like a line down my chin and a little bit at the end is beyond me because it's quite difficult to sort of get it. When your hand's shaking, it's quite difficult to to cut it. Well, why, why even use a razor? Why, oh, I don't use a, a dry shaver. I don't know. But even things like brushing your teeth, people don't realise that... Teeth can be your dental health can be an issue with Parkinson's as well. Not because you don't you're not able to brush your teeth, but quite often people will clench their teeth in the night and it causes them to crack and all sorts. So that that's just in the kitchen, the ki uh, sorry in the bathroom, the kitchen as well. When I break crockery, I can't. I'm quite often putting my hand on the hot 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 hob. I spill pan. I can't cook. Every and when I'm disconnected, like I was a little early, you literally cannot do it. You can't type because you, your hands are all up. You can't eat. You can't dress yourself. I mean, the, everything that most people just do subconsciously, everything is a conscious decision for me. And, and that is that tiring then? Because Yeah, it's... desperately tiring, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, it's funny. That's one, one of possibly one of the most debilitating things when you do twitch around is, I mean, I have to have like a 20 minute, I don't, when I'm in, in the office, because I go into the office once a week, up from the, for the four days, but I can't do it at work, but I, every lunchtime I have to have a nap for half an hour or a power, otherwise I can't get through the afternoon, it's ridiculous. But that, after, when I do that, I have to say, did I choose to have Parkinson's? No. Is it my fault? No. Does it help to get angry and upset about every little mishap or fail? The answer is no to all of those questions. Mm -hmm. So that that's one of the reasons I can stay positive. But it's you have to kind of reassert that those no factors. It's not my fault, no. you know. No. There's nothing I can do about it. I just have to go to the flow. So. And and it's incurable, but you've had exactly treatment. yeah. I mean, I haven't mentioned this before, but you've had treatment and significant um, um, surgery. surgery. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super I'm lucky on that because you're a bit yeah. like a bionic man. <laughs> no, I am. I am actually battery powered, Sarah. I really am. <laughs> I have. I I often tell this story, but you know when people go away and say, "I need to recharge my battery." I need to go on holiday. Well, if that's the case, I must have a holiday every day because I need to charge my battery up every single day. 
otherwise I don't function. I literally, if my battery goes flat, I'm in big trouble. And the reason I'm battery powered is seven, gosh, gosh, 17 years ago, I underwent, which at the time was a fairly not particularly common procedure called deep brain stimulation, mm. where they attach a stereostatic, um, it looks like a big metal Meccano frame to your head. Okay. So you can see so you can't move it. And then they, you're supposed, at the time you were supposed to be awake, they drill two bit what, holes into your skull here, take the, the bits of skull and then drill, put into electrodes. But they're about this long. What? All yeah, they're, they're pretty deep. Into your brain and sort of to stimulate the areas of the brain where the dopamine cells have gone missing. Okay. And then they attach it to a it's a, it's a set. They attach it to a wire. Not that, that's not the wire, by the way. That's my headphones. I've got a wire that goes from my this electrode down underneath my scalp, behind my ear, into a a pacemaker type thing in my just akin to a heart pacemaker, if you like it. That's what it looks like. I'm on to my third one now. But without it, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be put it this. Way, I wouldn't be talking to you now. Mm-hmm. Not, not that I wouldn't want to, but I just simply wouldn't be able to. Mm. And it it's actually been a real life changer for me. It's enabled me to do some incredible things. I mean, I still have, I still can't cook. So it's dangerous for me to cook, can't drive. I struggle to get, you know, every, every, everything I you think of, of doing on autopilot, it's a struggle for me every day. I have to think about it. How do you recharge? Where's your battery pack and stuff? My battery, I actually have um, a shoulder. Uh, it's like a bit like a scarf, which I put over my, round my neck. Okay. And and it literally, it char- it charges my battery by Bluetooth. Wow. And it, <laughs> it's really smart. And it's, uh, I and I can actually alter the uh, amount of electricity going into my brain. But as it happens, and this is something I've learned along the journey, the more you change the electricity or change the settings, the less stable your brain becomes. And it takes, I mean, although it might have an instant effect, it does take, I mean, I found it takes about three months to get back to normal again from when, when when your stim has been turned off. You can say, obviously, you get an instant reaction, but your brain doesn't take about three months to settle back down. So I just don't change my my settings and just just take the medication I have alongside it, and that seems to work okay. Even though I can't walk very far at all or anything, I have a mobility scooter now, which I use when I'm, when I'm out. So it doesn't stop me getting out and about or anything. Mm. But it, I mean, I'm a big believer in using assets that will help you do, ha, make your life easier. Some people think, "Oh my God, I've got a walking stick. I'm an old person. I'm vulnerable." Blah blah blah. Doesn't matter to me if it helps me. Then and it can help me get out and about. And that's that's all I'm concerned about. And. We do. We go out a lot. Me, 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 my wife and I go out a lot. And in fact, I've got a huge test tomorrow. I've got to tell you about this. Do you oh. watch the Great Pottery Throwdown? I have done, yeah. Well, I'm going to be having a go at that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering whether can I, I'll be actually able to throw anything and keep the wheel going and stay on. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Are, you, are we going to see you on telly? No, no, no it's not on the prep. No, I'm not. I, I'm not. I've never had a go at it before. You have. I <laughs> doubt whether we're able to get the man, manage to throw the clay into the middle of the spinning circle, let alone make anything. But we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> so Bib and I are going to try that tomorrow. So that'll be fun. I, I want to know as well. What do you love about living with Parkinson's? What's is there any <laughs> You know, there are 
<laughs> I think I'd, I'd rather refer it to are there any silver linings to Silver living linings with, is good. Chronic, yeah. With chronic disease. Yeah. Now, I'm probably going to say yes, there are, because I don't think I'd have done half the things I do if I hadn't had Parkinson's. I have met the most amazing people. I've spoken besides, at the... besides me, of course. Be to... <laughs> yeah, you, be to... you, you were at the um, when you were a judge recently. Yeah. The um, diversity award. I was yes, and look what I have here. It just so happens I, ha I have it here. The Burberry, and I'm in the in the official program as a judge. Oh yeah. I'm going to find it now. No, it's one of my prou proudest moments that was. The judging panel, here we go. Good, there he is. <laughs> there it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, no. uh, I met, met some amazing people. And do you know what that talk? It's always, I mean, I've always believed in this. But the actual event itself, there were so many people who were just being them, allowed to be themselves, mm. having so much fun. And that, I think that's just a wonderful thing. There was no pressure. There was no preconceived ideas of how anybody else should look or behave or anything. It was simply a wonderful celebration of people doing great things. And I loved it. And I tell you, it's a real, it's a real honour to be able to judge. I mean, hopefully, in the in future years, there'll be, <laughs> it'll be a standard. People will, everyone will be included as standard. But while while we're obviously still working on things like this, it's a real pleasure to see how far companies are coming. Excuse me, my dog is just. Licking her paws, so I'm going to have to throw my. Oh. <laughs> that's the only way thing that seems to stop a Ruby. Stop it, love. She <laughs> frantically, she has a, she has arthritis in her paws, and she tends to lick one thing that she's oh. in a bit of pain. Oh. Well, so, but it is really off-putting. So I throw my raccoon just to distract her. And it is oh, actually yeah, lots, of, lots of silver linings, and you, you, yes, um, you've done something on a plane as well. And <laughs> you've been walking on that, a plane. <laughs> that was one of the maddest things I've ever agreed to do, but it was great fun. Did you raise now, money for charity? Was yeah, I was. I raised out three thousand pounds for Parkinson's UK. What it was was, um, I I have a, a wellness kind of, um, I suppose campaign or way of living, I suppose, with Parkinson's called Parky Life. And I'd done a presentation at the local WI, which my wife is the president of. And it was their first meeting. And after the meeting, I was just chatting with somebody. And she happened to say, do you know Anne Twist? And I said, no, I don't. And Anne is actually Harry Styles' mum. Okay. And her her father had Parkinson's. That was the connection. So I got I got in contact with her, and she we had we had a bit of a chat, and it turned out she was going to be doing a wing walk for to raise money. She also, I'd, I've always wanted to do that. Can I come along as well? And she said, Yeah, sure. And uh, anyway, it was postponed because of COVID the first time. But when we eventually got, it was the most exhilarating experience ever that is quite recently yes it was in 2021 wow and since was it 20 or yeah 20, i think it was in october 2021 yeah and it was br simply brilliant and it's uh the thought of it was a lot worse than actually once you were strapped on and flying and it was just exhilarating. It really was. <laughs> but I've done since then. I've done the uh, Velocity Two twice, which is the longest, fastest zip line in the world, in Snowdonia, where yeah. you get it's, it's like it, that's great fun as well. But obviously, I like challenging myself and doing crazy things, and then it's simply. 
it makes you feel alive and it makes you feel happy and it makes you, it just gives you a sense of well being. It now, gives you a know, dopamine hit as well. It, well, <laughs> yes, it does indeed. Yeah, there is that. I I never forget the dopamine hit. No, I think the the, the whole essence of dopamine is is being is being happy and getting those hits of happiness, and that's I think. I think that's why I took a sort of a vow of positivity because when you're happy and positive, people engage with you, yeah, and people smile back at you, and people people want to help, people want to be in your life, and that, and it's funny, it, I can be walking, I can be staggering down the street, and somebody who I don't know walks up and say, "Morning, ha- have a good day." And people like look back at you and go, "Wow, what what a nice thing to say to somebody," you know. I just like to be happy and happy. obviously, some sometimes it doesn't always work. Mm. But I think it's nice to be and to coin it's coin a phrase. It's nice to be nice, and I love helping people because yeah, you're, you're spreading that happiness. You know that it, exactly. Yes, they'll, you are. they'll think, oh. Yeah, that's a really nice thing to do. I might do that as well. And they, yeah. and they you know, spread a smile or something. It is, it is. Happiness is infectious, as you well know. Yeah. yeah. And and laughter as well. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's interesting, actually, particularly with Parkinson's, because people do tend to catastrophize events and think the worst. But similar to that, there's a, there's a, there's a, a medical condition where you, can laugh at inappropriate times and also cry at inappropriate times. And I can't remember what it's called just off the top of my head, but I have that sometimes as well. I can, I can, I think it's because where my, where my uh, electrodes are placed in my brain, I can get, my wife says I sometimes, well, she doesn't, but I think I actually cry at sometimes like a menopausal lady. I get so emotional at stuff. I mean, I mean, sort of upset and oh. tears roll down my face when I'm watching. I mean, even watching Brit, <laughs> even watching Britain's Got Talent or Paul O'Grady's Pog Dogs, oh. I, 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 I can just be there and there'll be tears rolling down. And I'll say to my wife, "You're crying," out. and she goes, "No, you're not. You're crying." <laughs> and it's it was onions. It was onions. Yeah, <laughs> But I don't think there's there's anything inherently wrong with being emotional. Absolutely not. No. Uh, in fact, I think it's probably more helpful if you can have a have a bit of a a cry or a rant rather than bottling stuff up. And I rarely rant. They say they say that um, in tears there's cortisol. That's, oh right, that's I didn't actually know that. Inside tears. Um, and that's why you feel a lot of relief because the cortisol comes out through the tears. No, oh, right, the red, so <laughs> no, I, I makes sense. No, it totally does. Totally, totally does. Yeah. Well, this conversation is going. I think we've been on for three quarters of an hour, and it's gone like in an absolute <laughs> flash. So, well, <laughs> uh, very quickly, what Parkinson's charities are you involved with? Right. Okay, I'm a trustee. The Spotlight Young Onset Parkinson's Disease, which focuses solely on the young version. There's about 10,000 people in the country with young onset. Wow. Allegedly. I actually think there's an awful lot more, but they've not been diagnosed yet. So that's Spotlight. Spotlight YOPD, Young Onset Parkinson's Disease. Okay. I'm a patron. But it's a, a, a charity in, based out of Sydney in Australia. Who share the very same values as Parky Life does, which I, which I haven't really gone into, but that's my that's my baby as well. And they're called It's Not Funny. Uh, but I also do advocacy work for Parkinson's Europe, part and Parkinson's UK. And I I've not done so much lately, but I have done in the past and work for Cure Parkinson's as well. So anything. I help out where I can. I'm not particularly choosy, but they're my main ones that that um, that I help out. Yeah. Cool. And and sometimes um, there's merchandise that you can 
buy because I know next produced a cushion that, that helped raise money for Parkinson's. I have one oh, actually. <laughs> oh, the love <laughs> cushion. <laughs> Um, is there anything else that you know like merchandise or do you just donate money to these charities what's the um, best thing to do uh, the best I mean if you I mean I think buying merchandise is a great way of getting involved because it shows it shows you support in a visual way or buying a cushion and in fact and the lady that works doing the designing work for next is a good friend of mine okay <laughs> and yeah, and she's a she's a, she's a she's a brilliant brilliant designer. She has young onset herself, and in fact, she has the same version of Parkinson's that I do, the Parkin gene version. Um, and she's she's amazing, but yeah, any money or any sort of merchandise you can buy, merchandise is great because it and particularly the stuff that that they do with the next with next is fantastic because as a real positive message i think there's a, i mean the cushion says love on it yeah and the cushion say are the cushions <laughs> and there are other cushions available now the other t-shirt that have really nice positive messaging on it and it's it doesn't necessarily have to be associated with parkinson's but the fact that it is is a bonus so you can wear it. You don't have to think you're wearing. I've got a charity T-shirt on. You can think this is a this is a really cool T-shirt. And I'm doing something great for. And a, I'm doing it precisely. Yeah. yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Fabulous. So so um, parky life. Yes. How long has yeah. parky life been going? About five years now. It's a pro bono. I mean, I still get frustrated, and and that's understandable. I think I would love it to go further, but it's a non because it's a non billable at work. We don't actually have a, a specific client for it. It's just a charitable thing that we do for the Parkinson's community, and I I I set it up, and simply it's because. It's a fun way of being able to cope with, with what is pretty much a horrendous condition. Um, and it's providing the, the community little nuggets of positivity through hacks, through tips, through funny stories. And it's a way of sort of looking at, I mean, that I've, I'm reading here that obviously, I, I mean, sometimes I struggle to get my undies in and I do the parky pants dance. <laughs> which is hopping in one leg one out and then falling on the floor <laughs> but i mean that if you, if you got frustrated at every little thing that went wrong then your life would be pretty miserable so we decided oh, well, i i originally decided the way to sort of deal with it would be to write a, a positive funny anecdote about what I've, what i've experienced and they they they've been illustrated by some absolutely amazing illustrators and artists from all over the world in fact and parkinson's has never been visualized like that before mm. and it's incredible uh you're turning I mean, what... it upside down to laugh <laughs> yeah, at he said, life's yeah. Mishaps, like we do yeah. yeah totally yeah i mean i mean i think part of the success of it is it's colour, it's vibrant, and it's funny. I think the humour has got, and happiness and smiliness has, has got a great deal to do. In And in many cases, it, it helps people sort of come out of their shell, helps people forget, or it's kind of like a distraction from the everyday, the everyday grind, if you like. Yeah. Excuse me. And then... Um, it just helps. It gives a little boost, daily boost to people, and I love it. When we get, we're going. To, we've got um, a parky art wobble at the World Parkinson's Congress, which is coming up in July in Barcelona, and it's just a Are different. You I'm speaking at the event. Yeah. Oh, so you're going to Barcelona? On your... Yes, in July. Yes, oh. and I'm, I'm I'm speaking about. About positivity, ironically enough, and living with a chronic disease for 50 years. But again, 
I I can only portray the way I see my my condition, and the way the way I've dealt with it over the years. Other people sometimes try and hide it. Now that might be their best way of dealing with it for them. For me, I've never ever tried. I've never said there's nothing wrong with me when I've been asked. And in fact, to try and get my sort of attack in, people hate the people looking at them in the street. But I think a lot of it is a protection device. People are, oh, is that person going to attack me? Is that person going to fall into me? Blah blah blah. So I, if I'm, because people think think that think that you're drunk or I don't know or pissed. That's why they I'm not pissed. I've got parkies. Yeah, and that is the, that is the most disarming piece of clothing I've ever worn. Yeah, because people stare at you, but then they come up to you and then they engage you. And you have you really got Parkinson's? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes it makes not only you feel better at what your condition is all about, but it makes more. I think more importantly, it makes pe- other people, people around you, everyday people in the street. Just feel safer and more at ease with themselves. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, that is that is such a good thing to be able to do, really. Do, do you wear that T-shirt a lot? I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean... It, I it's great it, it over there. It 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 yeah, it comes a multi... Yeah, it is, a, it's an icebreaker and BP. It's got... It has Parky Life brand all over it as well at the back, so it's like... Kills two birds with one stone, and pit, and someone said, "Are you are you pissed?" And I go, "Well, actually, I mean, to be fair, I I rarely drink very much at all these days, and like, I mean, I used to drink quite a lot, but these days I rarely. If I go out, I might have a one bottle of beer if that, but that's my own choice. I I just feel better without without having a drink. That's all. So what but, do you think, Kieran? Should we should we just wrap this up? What's your greatest achievement so far? Getting married without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, that's it, lovely. It really <laughs> is. Well, to be honest, I never How did you felt, meet. Well, we actually met on the flirting on Facebook, and that the app sadly is not around. I think it's it. it I suppose it it kind of turned the app is now on Facebook. It's probably the forerunner of Tinder, mm. because you had you had you had a picture when you could put anything you liked, and people would say what they thought of the picture. Not say really generally, but say oh he's fit or he's gorgeous or whatever else it may be. But it, the the amount of times that word was used became a sound a word cloud next to your picture. So the more times that word was used, the bigger the word got. Anyway, and if you liked the person that was that had sent you that you knew who was sending the messages, and you could go off and message them privately, and that's what I did. And I, I got I was, must have been talking to him for about eight months, on and off, and um, eventually we got she came around to my house and Max was still mum and dad, and we just hit it off like that. And so, you know, oh. we were it was like being in tax land but in real life you know what oh. i mean <laughs> and uh yeah we were together for five years and i proposed and then we got married isn't that lovely yeah yeah it's great and i've never honestly she's the first person i've ever called love just in the conversation hey love can you just i mean i don't mean like colloquial like you might do as friends i mean i just mean it i just i don't call i very rare if i call a viv it's like Who's Viv? <laughs> you know, it almost like cause I'm so used to calling her love. And it's just a that it was just such, such a natural thing. And I wish I'd I wish I'd actually found her earlier because we'd we'd have had a brilliant we I think we we just we just made for each other really. Yeah, soulmates. Yeah, soul yeah. That, that, we're, cool. we're we're both we're not we're soulmates, got similar scent. The only difference is Viv doesn't like football, and I love it. Or she likes sport, period. Or she doesn't mind mode sport, I guess. But but no, shit, we have a, we're a great team. And I think that uh, that helps a lot. And and does Viv work? She she actually doesn't. Now, she was um, um, 
a special needs one-on-one -on -one teacher, but um, due to uh, the stress and the incredibly poor pay that they get, I mean, it's ridiculous to the what they have to do. Working full time, it is ridiculous to pay that classroom assistants and and people are, and she's got qualifications and all sorts, but the pay is just ridiculous and the stress. She's coming home in tears and what have you. And said, "Listen, we can afford to run the house without, without you know, without your income. So just have some time, you know, retire, do what you want to do." Oh. And you have yeah. more time together as well. So yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. And enjoy your enjoy your your future life together. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Make, well, make I, all the memories though. Well, right. I think I, I think I'll end up working till I drop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I drop every day, so I mean I still get up again and carry on. So <laughs> uh, I, I like. Do you know what? I'm one. I really enjoy the work that I do. It's great. So long, well, mate. Continue. Yeah, oh, that that's lovely to. It's not work, is it? When you look, no, no, it, no, exactly, exactly, it isn't. Yeah, yeah, it isn't fabulous. Do you want? Do you want to say anything else? Um, I'd just like, to, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you ever so much for inviting me. And if you've got Parkinson's, never ever be embarrassed about showing your symptoms in public, because too many people think they're going to be chastised. But the more people sort of I suppose people, people, it's very strange to call it coming out with Parkinson's. And it's like, I guess if it's something that, it isn't the same as coming out sort of about your sexuality, but it's something that people feel incredibly shy about um, telling other people. But I, I'm, I'm, I'll be the same. I mean, why not? You're that, that's you. It doesn't define you, but it's you. And you're still the um, same person inside. Um, precisely, yeah. 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 I, you have to be the authentic. The, the authentic you. Ha if the authentic you shows up, people will come and come to you. You will attract people who like who are like minded and like you for being you. And I think that's wonderful. Brilliant. And and you are very visible on social media. So if there's anybody who needs to get in touch. Yep. Uh, for any guidance at, or yes, anything. At, at okay. Matt Eagles on Twitter or Instagram at Matt Eagles underscore Parky Live. Fabulous. I'll, I'll put those in the in the chat and you can give them to me as well. So yeah, thank you so much, Matt. It's been absolute. I've, I've had learnt lots and I've had a great, great. Time. No, it's been it's been thank wonderful you. and it's gone so so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll email you, you the, the uh, social media, the website and social media links so we can, if you could put those on or whatever or make them visible, that'd be so good, Sarah. Thank you ever so much. Absolutely. Thank you for watching, everybody, and uh, speak soon. Bye for now. Bye.